Hello everyone. So I wanted to show you guys today how to create pretty much cron jobs on AWS Lambda here and have them run repeatedly. Uh, this I think is a really good use case for AWS Lambda. Uh, instead of maybe building a traditional server or you have like a pet cron server, like there are still use cases for that, but like if you can get away with it, like a lot of things you can just do on AWS Lambda and then you don't really have to manage that server, which is pretty sweet. Uh, so I'll show you how to do that today and we'll just go through pretty much essentially this article entitled Serverless Ruby Cron Jobs Tutorial Route 53 Backup. So you can guess what this article is going to cover. It's, we're going to show you how to create a, a cron job or uh, a, a AWS Lambda function that gets repeated, repeatedly called and backs up your Route 53 records, which I think is pretty useful. Uh, Route 53 records, um, you know, you make some adjustments to it and then you don't remember. And uh, so this is really useful to go back in history if you ever need it. So we'll, we'll, we'll jump right through this. Okay, so job mode. Okay, so we're gonna grab this command and I'll explain what job mode does. So uh, in here, we're gonna go to the terminal and just run it. So jets new backer dash dash mode job. So job is uh, one of the modes with the new command. Um, it's the li uh, lightest weight currently in mode right now. And what that does is this creates a really like very thin skeleton uh, jets job or jets project that allows you to essentially run jobs and kind of nothing else. It, there's no API, there's no HTML, there's nothing. It's just a job, which is, uh, I, I think, again, very good, useful use case. So if you kind of go in here, you just look at open up the application, look how light it is, it's just a job. And all you have is application job. That's all you really have. Let's move this window over here. And you even look at the gem file. There's uh, essentially kind of pretty much empty, except for jets, really, and then some development kind of uh, gems. OK, so uh, from there, we can go into the folder, I guess, and then we're gonna create like a, a stub job. So um, uh, let's create a stub job. So new, we call it backup, backup job.rb, and then paste in here, so backup job. Uh, and what this backup job is, is um, it inherits from this application job, and you can define your own timeouts here. I think that the current new maximum now is, uh, 15 minutes. So this could be up to 900 if you want. Um, and what this job does is it, it, it's inspired from active job. So it looks like an active job, except it's a little bit different because there's this rate expression above it. So that rate expression, what that does is I'm going to move over here. It basically tells uh, Jets to create a CloudWatch event rule, which handles the scheduling of this Lambda function repeatedly. So there's something called CloudWatch event rules. It, essentially what it is, is it allows you to run a job repeatedly. It's a scheduler. So this one line is until this job to run every single one minute. And the reason why we're doing every one minute right now is because we just want to do it for initial testing. Uh, and then here's the Lambda code right here, uh, right below that declaration, the rate declaration. It's called route 53 underscore records. And then just putting out saying backing up route 53 records. So we're just throwing some stub code in here just for testing. We are actually going to go into the council, uh, the um, backer project. Jets council here, C is for, for council, is short for council. Then we're going to actually call this. So we can call it backup job dot perform now. And then the symbol here, and that's going to actually call it. So that's just, I just tested it uh, locally here. Uh, there's more information about the job, uh, uh, jobs here in the documentation under the jets and then the jobs right here. And here's the example. Here's the screenshot of the Lambda function. Here is the actually the CloudWatch event rule, which we'll take a look at live soon. And then here's just examples of how you actually call the job, just what we just did in the council. Okay, so I'm gonna X that out of there, and actually I'm gonna deploy what we kind of have right now. So uh, that's gonna take a couple minutes to deploy, and then I'm gonna come back, and then we're gonna uh, go check things out in the council. So that finished deploying. So now we can actually go check out the Lambda function as well as the CloudWatch event rule on the uh, on the console. So here's the Lambda console. Um, let's refresh just in case. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Here's the route through records. Um, there's the Lambda function. Let's go actually take a look real quick. Hop in here. That's the shim that gets called, but here's the code right here, right there. So that's the exact same code we just had locally. Now it's on AWS Lambda. And there's also a CloudWatch event rule. So let's go find out where that is. You click on CloudWatch. <clears throat> and then you go to events rules right here. So you click on here, you see the event rule and you click on this and it tells you that this is running on schedule a fixed rate of one minute. That's exactly corresponds to uh, this guy right here. One minute, right? Okay, and then we can actually see uh, the logs too. So you click on logs here, you're gonna see the log right here. So you click on this guy and you go search for log group. 
then you can see that it was our call one time while uh, I had been talking. So, um, you know, if we wait a little bit longer, it's going to just start another request there. So let's just refresh this a little bit here, and then it's going to kick off the next one. But you can see it's just putting the records because that's all we did right now. We just, we're just doing a stub job just to test things, just to kind of get a good feel of how things work. And so it's got, it called, it got called twice already. So we kind of really highlight it by um, searching here and there's a highlights in the browser there. Okay, so there, so that's actually essentially kind of working, but now we actually should write code. We should actually get this uh, working. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab the code from the repo. So this has already been already kind of pre-baked, uh, Martha Stewart style right here. So I'm gonna grab all this code so we don't have to kind of <laughs> write it line by line uh, and then paste it in here. So go in here and pack up job and go here and paste that in here. I'm gonna actually move this down here just so it looks a little bit easier to see. Okay, so uh, with this code, it does require another SDK, the Route 53 SDK to list all the records because what this backup job does is if you look at this, it basically loops through all the hosted zones in the account. And then for each zone, it kind of paginates through and then it calls it save to S3. And what the save to S3 do, it's, it, it, it will save, it uses JSON to uh, dump it in like a, a pretty form in a human readable form. And then it saves to S3 and then it uploads it right there. So uploads to S3 and here's the, it's, there's a configurable S3 bucket here too. So that's what the code essentially does. But the code does need this uh, SDK. So we're gonna grab this SDK and add it to the gem file. So that's done right there. Um, we are also going to um, need the S3 bucket. So I are created the S3 bucket, but I'm gonna show you the commands to kind of create the S3 bucket. Uh, I created a AWS S3 make bucket S3, and I created Jets uh, tongue backups here. So that's gonna bomb, but uh, because I just created it uh, before. So, but that's what you do to create the bucket. And then you also have to specify, it's all according to this, uh, mm, this blog post right here, the actually the, bucket as, a, as an environmental variable. And you could do it through an environmental variable file here. So I'm just gonna do that right there and cat it so you can see what it looks like there. S3 bucket tongue jets uh, backup. And then uh, this blog also covers like, oh, we should actually test it like before we deploy it. I think that's a pretty good idea. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this and we're gonna test it one more time, except this time it's actually called real code. Jets council right there, starts up a council and then I'm gonna for perform it and it's backing up the Route 53 records. So that's what I did. It just uh, looped through all the uh, Route 53 records and it backed it up. Um, I'm gonna exit out of the um, console there. And I'm gonna actually copy this down locally just so you guys can kind of see part of it. S3 copy this dot right there. So we can just kind of see this file right here now. I'll just show you the head of it, uh, the first 10 lines of it. So here's the ten, first 10 lines right there. So there's the Route 53 records. It's all backed up and that's, you know, it's a decently sized file here, main lines, 94 lines. So there's some records here. And that's just the domains that are on this account, right? So your account's gonna have different domains and everything. But I just wanna show you how to test that locally. And now we're pretty much ready to deploy. So uh, Jets deploy, I'm gonna go run that Jets deploy. And then while that's deploying, I'm gonna explain a couple more things about the code that we copy and pasted in here. So that's deploying. <clears throat> so I kind of explained already that what this Lambda function is doing is is looping through all the zones and then it's going to uh, list each kind of record for the zone. Uh, it lists them, I think, at the max, the batch size is 100. Uh, and then uh, for each page of 100, it, it, it adds like a one or two or three. If you have lots and lots of records, then you can have more pages of records there. And then uh, it uses that kind of domain to save it in like a pretty structured format so you can you kind of read it. So that's what the code does, it's pretty straightforward. But I wanna point out a couple things. So with this code that I pasted in, the rate, I've changed this to one day now. Instead of one minute, we don't wanna back up our three records every single minute, we just back up every single day. So there we go. So that just runs every single day. That's one way to do that. And then uh, another thing I really wanna point out are IMA policies. So this code here is accessing certain AWS resources. Uh, specifically, it needs read only access to route 3, and then it needs write access to S3 to save and upload the, the JSON files that we're generating here. Uh, so I'm using a managed IMA policy here to uh, give this Lambda function uh, access to the uh, to uh, Route 53. 
Locally, when you're running a Jets Council, it actually uses your local IMA user and whatever permissions that's associated with your IMA user there. But when you're in Lambda, it's using a, an, um, the IMA permissions that's associated by these definitions here. What Jets does is actually creates an IMA role for you and the IMA role is then associated with this Lambda function. And then you could kind of add extra permissions to IMA role via these declarations right here. So that's what we're kind of going over right here. So uh, this manage IMA policy, this is something that ADOS manages, which is really nice because let's say they um, extend roughly three and they add another API call. Well, you don't have to go back there and you have to add it yourself. They will kind of add that call for you and they manage that policy for you. So I, when, when I can, I use the manage IMA policies uh, when possible. And then this is a, a more like a custom user IMA policy here that creates a S3 write access. And the documentation for kind of all this, there's two of them. There's IMA policies right here and there's manage IMA policies. But essentially um, this IMA policy S3 right here, this thing expands out to pretty much this, this IMC policy um, uh, right here, where it's S3 a star. If you want more kind of fine grained permission, then you could, you know, you, you can add it. You can just go colon and add whatever you want and specify only the bucket. For the sake of the tutorial, I'm keeping it simple here, but that's essentially it. While I was talking, the deployment finished. So now we can go check on this and then actually test it on uh, AWS Lambda. So let's go back to our console here. Let's go to Lambda. Let's uh, go through here and let's just double check that the code uh, successfully deployed. Go down here, go to code, backup job. Oh, that's, oh, I guess I have to refresh. That might be useful. Two minutes ago. Okay. See that actually deployed. Backup job. There we go. I just, uh, I think I have to go refresh. Anyway, so there's the new code that was deployed. Uh, and now we're going to actually do a test. Uh, the test payload doesn't matter because our, our job function, our code here doesn't really use it. It doesn't really use whatever's there. And hit test. And this actually tests us the IMA permissions also, all right? So uh, here, there's a return success true, and you can see it, exactly what we are running the council locally. It's actually running right now on AWS Lambda, and is running at a rate at one day. And we, let's go, go, go double check that too. Let's go back to the council, uh, or no, the CloudWatch council. Go to rules, and then when you click on this, this should say a rate of one day now. So this is going to be backed up every single day. Uh, let's go finish the rest of this blog post here there's the screenshot that we just kind of we cover all this already and i want to say that right now it's saving it to s3 bucket and what i usually do is i say it right here usually i enable versionally a lifecycle policy to the s3 bucket so uh this script saves it to the same spot uh but what you can do is you can enable s3 versioning and with S3 versioning, instead of saving, uh, overwriting the file, it creates a new version of the files, essentially enabling like version control for S3, which is pretty uh, awesome because then we can get it for free. So if you enable S3 versioning, then uh, every single day this runs, it just creates another version, it creates another version. Then eventually it's gonna have lots and lots of versions. So then I create a lifecycle policy and I can set it. The lifecycle policy is a way to basically delete or uh, move S3 objects from the S3 bucket to let's say Glacier to basically archive it or delete the older versions out of the S3 bucket. So rotation is kind of handled for you by lifecycle policy. So I usually set those up and then basically that's how you can back up things in S3 is like, oh, that's, you know, it, it makes the code a lot simpler and just it handles everything for you. You're just leveraging um, your, your, your tools uh, wisely there. Okay, so uh, that is it for this video. That is it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you guys found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. That encourages more content like this, guys. Um, and um, let's see, if you can, uh, please, please, please go on the GitHub account for Jets and, and give it a star here. That's uh, That helps spread the word so that I really appreciate if you guys do that. Okay, thanks a lot, everyone. I hope you guys have a good rest of the day.